Let's see if some bills is coming. All right, I think, are we all here? Um, Ryan, Brooke, are you, are you there? We are here. I'm here, oh. yep. and I am here. Awesome, thank you, Dr. Duncan. Um, so I will be sending you our counter proposal. Uh, one second. Just bear with me and my email and my many tabs open. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, here we are. I'm sending you the kind of proposal email first and then I'll show you here uh, we are GAU There it goes. Let me know if you see it and I will uh, share my screen so we can all go through our proposal uh, live. I have it. I have your email. All right. It's opening up. All right. So what you see here, can you can you all see this up this uh, this word? Okay. So we have the same minimum, but we've moved uh, to two point eighty five on the races side. The rest is still the same. Uh, we're taking a pay cut here. Um, eight point five uh, is the current inflation, and uh, we can take a pay cut, but we cannot take two pay cuts. Um, so, and, and again, like any changes in races do not affect future GAs. Um, so we can take a pay cut here in view that uh, the GAs that make the least are, are hurting considerably. Uh, I mean, again, we are receiving reports of people cutting on insulin. Uh, we will for sure include that question in our next uh, in our next survey. We had a question on who could buy meds or who couldn't and 20% couldn't afford meds. Um, so we can we can definitely take a pay cut in terms of uh, oh, an overall raise, but we cannot do it on, on the minimum raise, not in, not in any good conscience because uh, again, the people at the bottom cannot buy groceries. Uh, and, and, and again, we need also to take care of um, the GAs of the future. Uh, with the current inflation, I know the Fed is trying to put the brakes, but uh, we don't know how that will, will go on. Uh, and again, hiring uh, someone for less than this, is, is it's, it would be rather difficult. We, we think it would be rather difficult this minimum has gone down from what we needed to uh, not be rent burdened. Uh, it, then it went down 
from what the University of Michigan pays, just two, 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 two points ahead of us in the ranking. It went down from what the University of Georgia pays, uh, which is number 16th. And it's in a situation that is rather comparable in terms of living costs to Gainesville. Uh, and we went down uh, almost $1,000 last time because we got re really last time we thought we were um, quite on track and, 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 and we welcomed the progress that had been made in the last session. However, uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, this is this is our counter proposal. Do you have a counter proposal for us? So, um, do you have an estimate of the total cost of that? Yes. So the actually, I have an estimate. Look at this. <laughs> One second. Bear with me on my many files and my many tabs. I'm sorry. I sh I know I shouldn't do this, but I do it. Um, all right, let's see. Here it is. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm still not sharing the screen, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, can you all see these? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Let's take a look here. So let's go first to this one. This is our proposal of the last time, right? What we did was um, apply the overall across the board race. Uh, to uh, the GAs that are continuing GAs first, and then apply the minimum increase uh, that we offered, right? The 28,500. The total cost of our last proposal, it would be practically $10, $10 million. Does that, is, does that include the, uh, in the fringe rate that, that comes along with the raise? Coming the in. The fringe rate that where it costs the university obviously more um, with regard to health insurance and other things that we have to build into there's a, there's a fringe rate that that is a percentage of compensation uh, so every dollar that goes up in compensation some some percentage I don't remember I don't know if Brooke knows but I'm not exactly what the fringe rate is for graduate assistance but there's a mandatory fringe rate that must also be paid into a fringe pool to make sure that you know insurance and other things are, are charged. Can you provide us with that rate? We would be happy to include it. Somebody in the comments. Yeah, I have that. It's um, for earnings for graduate assistance, it's at 12.4%. Uh, so what you're saying is that for every dollar, uh, there has to be this 12.4% like around, but it's particularly used for like it doesn't go to us, so it goes to? It goes into a pool of money that is used to cover the benefits that are provided to GAs as part of their employment. So yeah. it, does, it does go to you. It's actually um, going to 12.4% um, in the new fiscal year. Right now it's at 10.9%. I can send you some information on that in the chat so you'll have that background. Yes. Please. So, I mean, again, like, I mean, this is the total cost. If you, if you add that in 10 point something percent, you're talking about $11 million. Our last proposal uh, was $700,000 more expensive than this one. Um, and what we are offering today, just to give you an idea of what it what it is. And again, like if you're in seven million, you're not that far away. It's just that it's differently allocated. Um, let me show you this. This is a model of a 2.5% proposal. It's not that we are doing this. Uh, uh, but again, this is a model 
uh, of what a 2.5% proposal would be. Uh, this is 2.5 in raises plus the, the same minimum, the 28,500. Um, so just for your reference, the total cost would be 9,800,000. Um, this would take you to 10 million and something with the 10.5%. 10.5 was it? 12, 12.5 with the fringe. For, for, for now? Or for, can, you, can you remind us what you said earlier about the French rate for GA? Yep, it's um, it's ten point four percent now, and it's did you say it's going? At, yeah, it's going. It's ten point four percent now, and it's going to twelve. Okay, uh, on just, July one or January? Yeah, the new fiscal year um, coming up, July one. It'll go to twelve point four percent, and at present. It's 10.9%. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, presently 10.9, you, you were saying? Correct. Okay, so that would be in terms of, I, I'm doing, um, one second. 110, sorry. 9 divided by 100, that's 1.109. This is the cost with the, fringe, the current fringe rate, and let's do it with the next fringe rate. You were saying it's 12.4? 12.4. Okay. So that would be... This by 1.124. So this one goes to 11 million and, and with the current one, it's 10 million. There is another thing to, to do. This is a 2.5% increase. We are offering you currently a 2.8% increase, right? Um, 2.85, I think. 2.85. So here is, Always when you when you do uh, when you do a race, uh, then there is part of the minimum that goes over that race, and there is actually more money that you're spending on the ones that are um, above that minimum that you minimum that you're that, but that you're suggesting. However, um, races tend to be quite in alignment with what. The, the total the total cost that we currently have for the university, which is 102, 103, just let's let's be just over cautious, 103 million dollars. So just as uh, and I mean you can you can take it and we can get your calculation an exact calculation of the current proposal, but uh, just you know, what you've given is helpful. But but again, like I mean, it's a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, this is like a, like a test of the the costs of different races. Again, excluding the ones that are um, the ones that are not continuing employees, and they usually have a cost that is pretty similar to the actual percentual value of the race because it's just because we we are you're spending on us a number that is very close to one hundred. And that helps. So uh, as you can see, it, it goes pretty much in tandem, right? Like, I mean, a cost of, of the 2.5% raise is $2,400,000, almost $2.5 million. So we are, we are talking uh, about a $2.85 million um, added, to, added, uh, added to costs of a raise. That's a difference of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars with this calculation, uh, and we can add it actually. So let's do it. We have this. Oops, and we can add three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then we can um, 
do this by the current fringe rate and for the future fringe rate. Uh, So this would be the values, right? We're talking about with, with the current proposal, we are closer to a total cost of 11,200,000, almost with a current fringe rate or 11,400,048,384.9 dollars. Appreciate you walking us through that. That's awesome. But again, but again, like we can actually run the numbers because there is uh, even even though I'm calculating the cost of the race in the flight, uh, then you no the co the cost of the across the board race in the flight, then you gotta add uh, what was already covered by an increase in the minimum, right? So again, it's not exactly this, but we can get you that. I I think I I, I get you that it's not exact, and I don't need exact. That's that's helpful. Um, those general numbers. Um, I, I think um, sort of in response to your proposal, it, the, the university is prioritizing a 3% raise for, for all GAs. Um, that the university would like to make sure that all GAs get a 3% a increase. Um, so the 2.85 doesn't work. Uh, I don't have a counter proposal um, because our, our previous offer was our, our, sort of our final offer. Um, so to the extent you need a counter proposal, consider that to be our counter. Sorry, but yeah, the, that is, that is your proposal. That is that kind of, I mean, you can tell me that there is no counter proposal at all, uh, or, or, but that cannot be the counter proposal. Uh, but what we mean is, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly what how we proceed uh, with 60 days ahead of us of time available for bargaining when our counterpart, uh, and actually asked by our counterpart, uh, when our counterpart is telling us that this is um, the current final proposal. Um, in any case, it's entirely up to you now. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you right now, we're, we, again, our, any counter proposal is our, our previous proposal, so. You cannot, no, that, that's actually not offering a proposal. You can say, you can tell me that you're not offering a proposal, but you can't give me the we're same not, thing. We're not offering a proposal beyond what we offered earlier today. Um, all right. Uh, we still, we're, we're, for the moment, on our side, we're not declaring impasse, but we are not uh, okay with continuing with the status quo. We have offered you um, a proposal, and it's entirely up to your side to answer uh, or not answer. answer anything. I've answered. I've answered. Um, here is what we can do. You still wanted to know the numbers, right? You still wanted to know. That I think what you've given us today is fine, but you know, if you want to send us more information, we're obviously not going to turn it away. Okay. Um, of course. Yes. I, I don't know if we might have to summon a bargaining session to give you the actual aggregated cost uh, of this counter proposal, and we can do that. We can definitely do that. Uh, in the meantime. Um, in the meantime, if you happen to have, for some reason, a counter proposal, we're always welcome. We, we still have 60 days. Um, other than that, I think we're done for done today. For Is that even, Esteban, did you say that that was legal? Is that not? good uh like that's not good faith bargaining is we it we need to talk with our uff legal team about that uh, we need to talk with our uff legal team because again having 60 days ahead of uh an extension that you asked for um but at the same time telling us only one third of the time gone through that this is your final offer um that's not necessarily aligned with 
bargaining actively and making a sincere effort to uh, to achieve an agreement. Uh, but we will have to talk that with UFF legal, for sure. Understood. Any, anybody else that wanted to make any any other remarks? Uh, I had one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is for uh, Ryan. I'm just wondering. Um, so if the um, graduate assistant uh, union um, kept the cost that similar to the um, proposal given from UF, but maybe uh, redistribute it, like um, focus more of it in the minimum rising instead of the percent, would UF be open to looking at that? Because I understand this is the final offer, but if the cost is the same, would that interest the university? That's a good question. Um, and we, while you all were caucusing, we, we talked about that ourselves. And I, I think the answer is that um, the university has made the decision that the 3% raise is what we want to provide to all GAs across the board. So redistributing um, in a way that would take off of that 3% and put it in other places is not something we're okay with. Do you know the rationale behind that decision? Sure, it's, it's two things. One, we, we want to make sure that all GAs who, you know, everybody who's struggling with inflation, uh, and let's face it, none of the GAs are, you know, so well off that they haven't been impacted by it, that they all get some assistance and some help. Um, but not in real terms. You're still giving every GA a pay cut. And, and the university would like to, to the extent it can, uh, remain competitive across um, all different disciplines, colleges, departments, uh, by giving everybody a raise. Um, that's the rationale. All right, but according to uh, Professor Akito, you're not competitive in any department at the moment, really. So, and a 3% increase doesn't sound like it would bring you there either. And honestly, if your concern is about um, meeting like uh, inflation costs for all, shouldn't you be more concerned about those who are in the lower uh, positions and the lower strata in the university who are most affected and who are going to get the least for that 3%? And, and in that situation, we are... Um raising the minimum by a thousand and then offering additional one payments to the to the GAs who are paid the least. That's that's what our proposal is intended to address. We still have to calculate if that is an increase in real terms, but in any case, that's for the nine month appointments. Um, so I'm not really sure. We, we need to calculate if that is an increase that takes uh, takes those people beyond what they would need as a minimum uh, compensated for inflation. In any case, that when is you, a one-time payment. When you say will, nine, it's only for nine-month appointments, do you mean it? That no, I, I misexpressed myself. It's okay. based on the nine-month appointment. We need to yes. calculate it for, uh, for the 12 month and see if it uh, okay. over... I just wanted to make sure you knew we weren't... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it goes beyond 25, but again, that is, uh, that is again, a one-time increase and it doesn't affect future GAs, not even the GAs of next semester. Uh, you, you mean of spring, of spring 2023? When you say next semester? Uh, actually, it doesn't affect anyone entering um, even in summer or, or fall. This is a this is an across the board race. The difference when you change the when you change the minimum actually you're you're adding some some uh, uh, a one time payment raise uh, for for a subsection of GAs that are making less money, but that increase is in ten point three. When that happens, uh, you're not affecting GAs in the future by that. A, a one time payment is not recurring. I agree with that. Exactly, like um, the GAs that, that come in next fall, 
would still could still be hired on a 17,000 minimum, which is the one you offered. That's technically correct. Not not what the university is intending to do, but this is like I said, we're, we're trying to invest more in GAs in a way that we believe is fiscally sustainable. Um, not not to just throw out some money now and pretend like uh, we're not going to do our best as 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 the future unfolds. Shelley, you had your hand up a long time. I just wanted to say that this increase of 3% does not make our biology department look better at all. And it's going to look the same for, you know, most of the class uh, department. This does not help us look good for students. It doesn't help us look good for faculty. We know there's money there because we are hiring, as been said. So how do you think you're going to get good professors if you can't get students for those professors? Because I, I wouldn't recommend anyone would come here. And we made a shiny app so you could see how bad our salary looks compared to all the other biology salaries in the United States. We are in the bottom 18th percentile. When you break it down to AAU or not AAU, we are in the lower like sixth percentile. We look awful. 3% does nothing. And that should be communicated to administrators here. I hope they're looking at these numbers. I hope they're thinking about this because from all their interests, this matters. It doesn't just matter for us, it matters for them and they're making a poor decision here. Amanda? Yeah, I actually just had a quick question. Is the, I wanted to reiterate a question in the chat. Is the 3% increase an annual increase or a one-time increase? It's recurring. Okay, and then my second question is when you refer to the university, so when you say like the university, you're representing the university, it is like a bit ambiguous. So when you say the university, like who, who is about, who is saying this to us? Like who is making these decisions for us when you say the university, is it the board of trustees? This, this, these are the university administration. So, so like, is there a name or like a, a website that we could contact these people? Is, is it a group that we would be able to contact? I'm still a little bit unclear about who the university is when you say the university. It's, because you can be considered university administration, and so can Mr. Brock and Duncan. Like you're all considered university administration, but like who are who are we communicating with on your behalf? It's it is the group of the administrators of the university. It's not any particular individual. It's it's the entire university administration, the senior administration of the university. Right. So people who work in the board of trustees or people who work in Tiger Hall or people who work for the graduate school administration, which administration are we referring to? This proposal is by the university administration, which is not not necessarily the board of trustees, um, but we are we are presenting it on behalf of the entire university. So it's, it's on behalf of the board of trustees, the administration, but it is the administration of the university who is uh, fashioning the proposal. So who like who is setting the number is what I'm asking you. The $17,000 minimum, if it's not coming directly from you, who is setting that number? Is it a meeting that happens with a group of people? Is it like who is setting our minimum is what I'm asking. It is, there's not just one person. It's a, it's a large group of people who all sort of have input and feedback. And you can't name any of them directly to us, like who you're representing? I, I think we are here on behalf of the university. So this is the bargaining team. So the answer is no. I can give you our names. This is who, this is who. Great, got it, thank you. Talia? Yeah, so um, Ryan said that this 3% across the board raise is what the university has deemed as the most fair system going forward. But I mean, we are the body of graduate students bargaining for graduate students. And we're telling you what we've decided we think is fair for us which is raising the minimum. So who is asking for this 3% raise instead of the minimum? Like who, is there someone else that you've been talking to? Because why is the university overriding our voice and telling us what, what is fair for us when we are telling you, this is what we've decided is fair? Is there a third party we don't know about? Absolutely not. Well, so then I don't understand going back to Matthew's question, why even reallocating that money to meet our demands more closely, how would that be less fair according to the university? If this is, you know, 
we are the body of graduate students. We are telling you what is working for us, what will work for us. The, the university's proposal is based on what the university's rationale for the appropriate compensation that it wants to provide uh, and offer to the graduate assistants. Uh, and I've already given the rationale, I understand you might not agree with it. Uh, Esteban, I, me and Brooke both have a one o'clock. All right, any, Shannon, you had a final comment? Yeah, I just want to clarify that the 3% raise was recurring annually. Is that what you just said? The, it's the not that you will get another 3% next year. What it means is that your salary base would change 3% up and that will be kept throughout your appointment. It will not affect future GAs. That affects only ongoing GAs at this time. Yeah, it, essentially, if you make just a round number $10,000, this would be a 3% raise of, what is that, Esteban? Is it $3,000? Am I right about that? No, right, $300. Um, it depends on the, on, on, the particular, on the particular case, but I mean, let's imagine someone on a 12, on, on, or on a, Let's imagine someone on, on the nine month appointment with the race of the minimum that you're choosing. Yeah. So that would be $510. Thank you. So the $510 that would be effective retro back to January one uh, would stay in your, in your salary and your pay while you remain a, a GA. Um, and any future raises would be compounded on top of that. Which is different from the, the, the one-time payment that is being offered for the GAs that are on the lower uh, side of the distribution. Uh, that's, cool. that, that's, cool. that's not ongoing. That's, not, uh, that's something that they get for this time, and that's it. Yeah. It's right. not something that will be added to their appointment in the future. Um, so we've given you our counter proposal. It's entirely up to your side to summon us for a bargaining session uh, and give us a counter proposal. If, if you change your mind, uh, we'll be here. And we have 60 more days. Um, what we are sure is that the, none of the options uh, that uh, you not giving us a counter proposal are, are quite satisfactory. There is impasse and uh, there is the status quo, right? That leads us to either two options or take your, or you taking our counter proposal or, you, or we taking your counter proposal. Uh, those are the options, right? I think that's um, right. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, so on our side, there are three, these are the three possibilities, impasse, your counter proposal, or the status quo. None of them are very much to our appeal, um, but we have 60 days. Uh, and that's a long time to prepare, I think. And again, like uh, up to now, like, I mean, we've given you our kind of proposal and uh, it's entirely up to you to summon us or not to a bargaining session. And we will let you know like closer to the 90 day limit if we uh, go for uh, status quo or impasse. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll see everyone else in the uh, caucus room. Thank you.